create a new construct of collaboration and change. We need to invest in these models to create the sustainable futures for ourselves, our children, and so on. Opportunities for diversifying the economy abound, but we must invest our time, our money, and our political will to make these changes. The good old days, they're in front of us if we can embrace the change. My name is Brian Wax, a lot of people call me Wacko, and I consider myself a human being walking this planet trying to do the right things every day. And yes, I fully embrace my mediocrity. <laughs> I really care about my community and people. I'm a wannabe athlete, I'm a nerd. Um, I've lived this to a hedonistic lifestyle, go outside of Philly, go Eagles, um, <laughs> DC, New York City, Los Angeles, and I lived in Vail for 25 years. And I've been a serial entrepreneur. Um, that's not as sexy as it sounds, by the way. I've had my successes and my failures. And after the 2008 crash, I lost my income, I lost my life, I lost my health for a year, and I lost my home to foreclosure. And that is probably the best thing that has ever happened to me. Um, I went through a program, that's what I meant. I went through a program at the Vail Center to figure out what drives us. How do we take our passions and go through life with meaning? And I came to know my purpose, community through commerce. Um, so from that perspective, I want to talk about sustainability and how we know it in the mainstream and how we might redefine it, um, cutting across the spectrum of lifestyle, environment, and business. So I want to talk about the opportunity that we have, everybody in this room and in this planet, have in front of us, if we're willing, as I said before, to invest our time, our money, and our political will to make it happen. Not only as individuals, but as members of a community with common interests and goals. So what's my connection to sustainability? Um, my, my journey inward began with doing beach cleanups. And, um, I hate straws. I can't stand straws. And any bartender or waiter who has served me in the last 10 years um, has heard this weird ball guy say, uh, water with lemon, no straw, please. Um, no straw? Yes, thank you, no straw. And then about one in 10 of these servers would um, ask me, why no straw? And then I would have no problem talking about the grid patterns that we laid out and the squares, and how many things we counted in each square, and by far, straws were the number one. So, I don't need them. I'm sure nobody in this room needs them, so just please join me today and just say no. <laughs> so, this little epiphany of mine um, took me down the road of what else I could do in my journey to make service of others. And, how do I, just one guy, with my smallest of actions, make changes, um, aside from the straw thing? So, let's look at the, the definition of sustainable. Able to be maintained at a certain rate or growth, i.e. sustainable economic growth. Conserving an ecological balance by avoiding depletion of natural resources, i.e. our fundamental commitment to uh, economic sustainable development, excuse me. So let's look at um, sustainability in economic terms. The shift to sustainable technologies is happening, but what about the shift to sustainable economies? Um, how do we encourage growth and encourage investment, embracing change, yet preserving our communities? As old industries die, as they always do, we new ones will emerge. Coal, coal is done. Uh, gas on one side and solar and wind and geothermal on the other just pushed it off the board. Its demise wasn't political, it was economic. We need to embrace these changes and not fight them. We need to help people to train and progress and move forward their lives as these changes inevitably disrupt society. But to build a sustainable society, we have to accept slow, definitive growth. 
As we saw in the 90s and the 2000s, growth for the sake of growth is just not good. We must remember that those who have access to technology can advance quicker and therefore leave those who don't have access to it behind. So, such is the case in the crash of 2008. Access to cheap capital and technology allowed big corporations to increase their market share and left many small businesses behind. But when it comes to things like our food shed, this is ultimately a security issue. And it's a nutritional issue. The threats we face right now are endemic. So big agriculture's investment in monoculture is a threat. Our population gets, grows, and it gets industrialized. Uh, the nutritional needs of our citizens must be protected. Climate change, man-made or not, um, is a security issue. And as dramatic shifts in weather will always happen, by diversifying our production, we can begin to address supply chain interruptions and quality. Global market forces are a threat. China is buying U.S. companies and shipping food back to China to feed its increasingly protein-hungry citizens. Big agriculture and Wall Street only care about quarterly reports and not the health and safety of our citizens. Consolidation of corporate interests and mergers and acquisitions are a threat. When we realize that increasing shareholder value is nothing more than political BS or anything I can do to exercise my lucrative stock options, 80% of Americans own just 8% of all stocks. So you tell me who's benefiting from these mega mergers, the very few at the expense of our communities and our supply chain. A lax regulatory environment and cultures of corruption are the <laughs> JBS needs are providers of 25% of the beef and 16%, 18% of the poultry in production in the U.S. Their scandals of bribery in Brazil pervaded the government and their poor conditions in their processing plants um, have hurt our ability to control our food supply. So what do we do? Um, if we develop a culture of collaboration, a culture of helping each other, a culture of growing together versus competing against one another, we can raise all boats as the tide of the economy rises. We need to think about not only how we retrain and progress, but how we sustain the planet and therefore enjoy the lifestyles that we want to enjoy. Virtual reality, robotics, AI will change us in ways we don't even know yet. We can create a culture of change by embracing it and invigorating our populace by challenging ourselves and keeping going through a constant exploration and learning. We must use technology to move forward, but not at the expense of our planet, our community, and our neighbors. We have to become stewards of our planet and not just tourists passing through. We need to shift to focused educational pursuits using technologies like virtual reality, etc., and embrace these innovative programs. Right here in Colorado, there are apprenticeship programs for our youth to experiment with their passions within the workforce. So it's time we start thinking about how to move forward in rural America. We can't afford to let Wall Street or our dysfunctional politics to decide our fate. Broadband, broadband and the ease of access to it allows um, progress in the sparse and remote areas of our country. This is the beginning of how we change. Whether it's remote, allowing remote workers or wherever they feel like it, or starting up companies. We're no longer burdened by the constraints of being near a city with all its infrastructure, density, and resources when an internet connection can do just that. So how do we grow in a region without sacrificing all those things that attracted us here in the first place? 
Our lifestyles are resolve, revolve around being close to nature. Our farms and our ranches ground us in um, they, our human existence and they sustain us for our daily lives. The wonders of the landscapes around us uh, give us a unique backyard to raise our families in. But our family, our farmers and producers are collapsing under the weight of increased competition from technology they can't afford and the arbitrage of currencies and therefore labor rates. The lack of immigration reform has hampered operations on these small farms to produce high quality products to sell to locals instead of shipping them to the local ski resorts or the front range. One path available to us is through co-ops and collaboration. We can bring these economies of scales to these agricultural areas and level the playing field at the same time increase the quality of life for everyone. Organic Valley, the largest farmer-owned organic co-op in the US, Canada, Australia, and the UK, with $1.1 billion a year across 50 states. Ocean Spray is an agricultural co-op in Massachusetts of cranberries and grapefruit, has 700 member growers in the US, Canada, as well as Chile, and did $2.2 billion in 2013. Lander Lakes is a dairy co-op in Minnesota, and this co-op has 3,600 direct member producers, 1,000 member cooperatives, and 10,000 employees. So co-ops are very successful. So we must start to redefine what is sustainable in our communities. At that point, we can start to live lives that are more fulfilling and happy. So for me, this is how I redefine sustainable. Access to technology levels the playing field and using it collaboratively versus competitively. We can no longer think of ourselves but include our neighbors and our communities and the planet as part of the wealth we want to create. Our well-being and security is not being well served by corporate culture and driven by mergers and acquisitions and a political culture driven by immediate gains versus long-term planning. Collaborative engagement, commerce in service of community, both environmentally and economically, allow us the idealistic goal of a peaceful life in existence.